So you want to do the So 2020 thing and start live streaming using your Helix. Here's a bunch of tips. What's up Helix users? Today we're going to talk about live streaming with your Helix. Obviously 2020 being 2020 means that as musicians and guitar players, we have to kind of adapt and overcome. Try to figure out ways to keep busy, keep working. And the best case scenario for us at this moment is become live streaming. I know for you know my touring life and my professional life playing with Jessica Lynn, we've been limited to two live streams since March. And that's like full band stuff and you know some stuff at home. But I want to talk about how I approach making a Helix preset for these live streams. And I assume, you know, if you're a church uh, praise and worship guitar player playing in church, or if you're trying to play some original music at home or do some covers, you might not be thrilled with how it sounds live. And there is a science to this. Playing on a live stream, I found a lot of differences between my normal touring presets, my normal live presets. And the first one mainly that I want to talk about, and then we're going to, you know, we'll go through my preset that I used for our most recent Christmas special that we filmed at Daryl's house, the place where they film live from Daryl's house, the venues uh, local to us. And we always do a bunch of shows there normally to a, fill, a fully packed house, but this was to three people and our dog, Audrey, but we made the best out of it. And I want to talk about the process I was going through while making the preset for that live stream. So the first real big difference between streaming a guitar tone versus playing live, when you're playing live, you're being amplified through a PA system or through an amplifier. Um, when you're live streaming, you don't have that. So any room sound, any reverb, any room echo is totally gone. So it's literally the driest that your signal could possibly be, which exposes a lot. Um, it's definitely a different mindset when you're playing because you have that sound just direct in your ears and it's a little bit of a weird sensation and a little bit hard to get used to at first. A couple of tips that got me through it and made me feel a little bit more comfortable regarding that reverb thing. You wanna lean a little bit heavier on your reverb and your delay sounds because like I said, it's really dry and there's nothing worse than like a super dry like guitar tone in my opinion. You wanna have a little bit of love to it and something that's gonna help suit the overall sound of the band but also be audible. You don't wanna have a delay or a reverb that's totally inaudible. So on the reverb topic, let's just hear what I have pulled up here. So I have two reverb settings and what I have going here, this is with regular reverb. So a little bit of a touch, a little bit of a, a little bit of a, what do I got even on here? A little bit of spring on there. And I mean, this is kind of a normal setting where I would keep it at for a regular rhythm sound, but this might change a little bit later. So I have also, you'll see an HX edit here. I have a one foot switch toggling these, and this is gonna basically be my ambient sound. So I'm pairing the search lights with the mod chorus echo. And this is what I'm using on more like of the slower ballad type of sounds where you know, I might have a, a lead where I'm playing a slower solo, something more melodic and needing this type of reverb. And you hear the trails and stuff on that. Normally through a PA system, that delay and reverb would probably totally explode and sound way too washed out. But in the context of a live stream, that sort of thing works. So now, aside from the reverb thing, that's like the number one pet peeve for me when going into the live stream is hearing that dry guitar sound. Speaking of guitar sound, 
Let's look at the amp I'm using. Um, I'm using the Tweed Blues amp, which I think is such an underrated amp. Um, if you guys want to see me do like a little bit of a preset build with this, this is a really cool amp. This is one of the first times I ever didn't use snapshots to do amp settings. So I'm just straight up playing this amp. But for my regular clean sound, I want a little bit of a hair on it. So here's just the straight up clean sound with the less reverb. <laughs> So you might think that has a little bit of a hair on it. That hair in the context of a mix and especially over the live streaming does not read as distorted. So if you check out some of the clips from the show, you hear this is a super clean sound almost the whole time. And yeah, you have that little, that little hair, but it's just enough to keep it full sounding in my opinion. So. That's the second thing. Let's go through some more of the presets. So for the majority of our show, and I'll link to the full concert uh, below in the description, you'll see me playing this D'Angelico. It's got TV Jones pickups, amazing guitar. If you want to see a full demo of this guitar, I've always wanted to do one and I've just never gotten around to it. So if it's something you'd be interested in checking out, let me know in the comments if I should uh, have the go ahead and see if you guys are interested in this guitar. And if you guys want to copy this, Audrey wants to be in my video. If you guys want a copy of this preset, when this video hits 600 likes, 600 thumbs up on YouTube, I will put this up for free. This is my actual gig preset, my real live touring preset that I would use in my live streaming setup. Like, I guess not touring. What a waste of a sentence that was. Not touring, my not touring gig preset thing. So for the majority of the set, I'm using this guitar and I'm using this Air Apparent and I'm kicking the sound with my foot, but my air parents, my solo boost, so. And now here, out of context, I feel like in my ears, this does not sound that great. So here on its own, it might sound a little bit mid heavy to you and kind of fuzzy, but in the context of the band, this is what sounded best. And another tip for this type of thing is you have to take these presets into rehearsals and you need to practice with them. So this presets come a long way from where it started with me, where I had to tweak a bunch of things mess with the solo boosting and mess with the stuff. But the most important thing is that you need to listen back to the audio that you're streaming with. Sometimes you don't have that luxury, but if you have an in-ear rig, it definitely helps to make your preset using your house in-ear rig that you're gonna be using on the show. The in-ears are a pretty good representation of what's gonna come out on the live stream. And as far as solo boosting goes, if you're lucky enough to have somebody mixing you, which we fortunately were for the Daryl show, we have Pete Moshe, the house guy there, who's phenomenal mixing us and mixing that audio for the live stream. But if you don't have that, you kind of have to take all of the solo boosting into your own hands and uh, really make sure that you're not overdoing it or underdoing it. So definitely need to listen back to either a streamed rehearsal, which I would recommend doing, or uh, asking if there's a house sound man where your boost should be at and if it's too much or too little. Definitely, definitely a must when it comes to doing a live streaming preset. So between those few sounds, that covered almost the entire first half of the show, using this guitar at least. So I'm also gonna talk about how I accommodate the preset to handle a second guitar. So I'm going to switch to my Les Paul, um, my Les Paul Custom for the second half of the show, right? Much better. So this is my Les Paul Custom. Been on many a video and many a gig, if you have any questions about it. Ask it below. I love talking about this thing. So now straight up, the only time I use this guitar is on uh, one of the jazzier numbers where 
I stuck to the neck pickup, rolled the tone and rolled the volume back to about six and got, you know, jazzy tone for a flame top Les Paul custom that's like a total shreddy looking guitar. So this is my jazzier sound with the same preset, mind you. I didn't change anything on this. I'm just messing with the uh, volume and tone a little bit on the neck pickup to give me that more jazzy sound. Not a bad clean tone. All I'm doing again, volume and tone knob, something a lot of guitar players forget that they could do. So usually when I switch to this guitar, it's either, it's really just the way the set list worked out where I was on that one, but I'm going to kick on the Diana drive. And now when I kick this on, here's what that sounds like. So now you might notice that the volume dipped a little bit in comparison to the bypass. I do that on purpose because I'm switching guitars. When I play this guitar, my output becomes a lot hotter. So I'm using the Diana drive as my dirty amp. Instead of using a second amp, I'm using this as my dirty amp. And I've actually got the level brought down on that so I don't overtake the band. And I also have a foot switch on here which if you see right here, my level control, you see that changing. And if you right click, that's my foot switch number two, which is just the level. So if I find that maybe the band's rocking a little bit harder and that's not enough, I have that level control to give me that extra little boost if need be. Now for the, the big solo moment that I had in this Christmas show. For that, I kicked on the Trinity Chorus and I used the Horizon Drive as my solo boost. And now I had to be really careful with this because being such a scaled down song, I didn't want to totally blow the band away and, uh, and you know, rip faces off with my volume, especially on the live stream because that stuff, it's permanent. It's right there. And if you're too loud and you don't know it and everybody that's listening is going to be the only people to hear it, it's gonna be a nightmare for you. Now with the Trinity chorus and with that little reverb delay swap. And you hear the heavy delay and reverb again, because especially for a big kind of, you know, epic solo moment, you don't want a dry guitar sound. You want all the, you know, the cheese and the good stuff on it to make it sound good. All right, so that is my basic, you know, couple of tips for live streaming. If you are gonna start live streaming or if you've had trouble with it before, you know, let me know in the comments if this type of thing's helping, helpful, if it's helping you out. Um, if not, throw, throw out some tips for others that are doing live streaming. Let everybody in the community that's checking out this video know what works for you and, you know, different strokes for different folks. Some people will work, some people be on their own thing. Nothing wrong with that. So I wanna thank you guys as always for taking the time to watch the video. Always appreciate the support. Again, if you haven't, please like, comment, subscribe. It's enough of my shtick. See you in the next video.